program on the line with us is New York Times bestselling author Robert Draper. He's got a new book out, Weapons of Mass Delusion. He's a contributing writer to the New York Times Magazine, National Geographic. The author of several books, including Dead Certain, the presidency of George W. Bush, and of course, Weapons of Mass Delusion is new. And Robert uh, Draper Robert is his Twitter handle. Uh, and of course, New York Times will for much of his writing. And, and, and uh, Robert, w welcome, welcome to the program. I, this is an extraordinary, some of the data in here about, you know, for example, Republicans who are like embracing QAnon. Tell us about this. How, how did, you know, the subtitle is when the Republican Party lost its mind. I guess my, my first question should be, when did this begin? Sure. I mean, it's uh, the truth is, Tom, that, that the book doesn't intend to be a history book that traces decades um, backwards in time uh, through the conservative movement, but really captures instead an 18-month snapshot in time that I think will prove historically pivotal. It begins on January the 6th, 2021, and um, reaches up more or less to the present day. And it's during this span of time, Tom, that, that um, obviously in the wake of the riot at the Capitol, one would have expected the Republican Party to say, wow, um, uh, given that um, those were those were our <laughs> those were our people, they they were Republicans uh, supporting Donald Trump, um, and given uh, how the peaceful transition of power was disrupted uh, nearly severely, uh, it falls to us as members of the Republican Party to um, kind of descend into meditation and figure out um, how to purge ourselves of these unsavory elements and to move on from the leader of the party, Trump who um, fanned the flames of this. As we know, Tom, that's not at all what occurred. And today what we have is a Republican Party whose um, chief messengers, for the most part, are people who uh, are more MAGA than Trump in many ways, um, and more extreme in their beliefs, and more shrill in the manner in which they broadcast those beliefs, and, uh, and yet with a following of tens of millions of people who continue to believe lies such as that the 2020 election was stolen and all these adjacent lies um, as well. And people who don't believe them. I mean, you've got Kevin McCarthy saying that, you know, these lies are going to help him become House Speaker. You've got Marjorie Taylor Greene, if I'm reading this correctly, um, saying that uh, she could be vice president in 2024. Right. I mean, is this, yeah. these people are serious. Yeah, yeah, they're serious. I mean, so they're serious to the extent that, so, to kind of um, separate them, Kevin McCarthy is the Republican House Minority Leader who desperately wishes to be Speaker of the House. Uh, he made the considered decision, Tom, that he cannot achieve that goal uh, without placating Trump, um, not because he loves Trump, uh, but because he fears him. And right. he fears Trump because Trump continues to have such loyalty uh, among the base of the Republican Party. And um, it's McCarthy's belief that he can't, uh, that, that the Republicans can't take back the House and he can't become Speaker uh, without, um, without the support of Trump. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, is in a lot of ways the in-house version of Donald Trump. Uh, you know, very, very loyal to Trump, very close to Trump. Someone who, as you were alluding to earlier, was an adherent to the QAnon conspiracy theory just a few years ago, and still, I think, kind of accepts the fundamental precepts of QAnon, even as she disavows, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of the crazier stuff that the that Q was pushing out. Uh, um, but uh, but she has extraordinary influence within the party now. And and uh, meanwhile, the more establishment figures of the party uh, have gone silent, uh, hoping that the Greens of the world will go away and they can reclaim their party but with no real plan on how to do so. Well, and that's not how it works. I mean, it's been it's been over 40 years since I read The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Schur, but I'm pretty sure I remember pretty clearly that the conservative party in Germany thought that they could they could harness the power, the populist power of Adolf Hitler for their benefit and uh, and and that his uh, personality cult would be a passing phenomena. It didn't work out all that well. I mean, history uh, I don't think is going to treat these people well. Uh, your yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, look, this is, you know, what you were just describing in Germany is not dissimilar to when Trump took power and won in 2016. There was a belief amongst establishment Washington that, look, this guy did no the ropes. Uh, we're going to help him out. Um, but we'll also try to contain, you know, his more extreme impulses. And in the meantime, we're going to get a lot of goodies out of this. So, you know, that we're going to get the federal judges that we want. We're going to get the tax cuts that we want. Uh, and indeed, they did get those things, but they unleashed a demon uh, in Trump who they found impossible to control and who uh, continues 
to be the leader of the Republican Party in every meaningful way, despite the fact that he is no longer in office, despite the fact that the Republican Party under Trump's stewardship lost every branch of government, and despite the fact that Trump was twice impeached and, and um, was in most ways that count responsible for the insurrection on January the 6th. So right. he's still as the head of the party and uh, establishment Republicans are still clueless as to how to disentangle him from the party. Would it be reasonable to argue that the principal message of today's Trumpified Republican Party is basically white male supremacy? Well, I, so you could certainly say that, Tom, but I think that, that what's inarguable is that the, the, the basis of the magnified Republican Party is grievance against others mm -hmm. and the belief that um, uh, that there is, as Trump has been saying, as Marjorie Taylor Greene has said, and these are words taken right from the pages of, of the McCarthy era of the 1950s, that there is an enemy within. That, that our real threat today is not necessarily the Chinese, certainly not the Russians, um, uh, but instead the threat of, uh, uh, of malicious actors um, within the United States, by which Trump and his like mean um, uh, everyone to their left, uh, the mass media, big tech, and the so-called deep state in government. And so, um, and, and why do they believe all this? Because they believe the MAGA Republican base does that America, as they knew it, has been taken away from them piece by piece. Has And this kind of forfeiture, of course, reached its zenith with the 2020 election and their belief that, that because Trump said so, the election was stolen from Trump. And they believed it because they believe that over time so much has been stolen from them. So it is that, that sense of loss and that sense of grievance that principally is, you know, to what you were saying before, Tom, and, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the belief system of a lot of non-college educated, you know, working class whites. And, um, and, and Trump is their, Trump is their warrior. Trump is their favored president. And that he is no longer in the White House, they believe is, you know, the crowning forfeiture, the crowning uh, theft. Yeah, 40 years ago, or even more recently than that, I mean, Norman Lear really kind of broke this barrier in television in the late 90s. Um, uh, but 40 years ago or thereabouts, uh, all of television was white. Uh, all of corporate America was white. More than half of Americans went to church every Sunday. You know, it was the leave it to beaver world. And yeah. now we've had a black president. I would, I would say that 2008 was the moment that really triggered the, the yeah. insanity on the right. But, you know, we've had a black president. Uh, fewer, than, uh, fewer than a third of Americans are now going to church. Um, you, you have, uh, oh, and, and, you know, back 40 years ago, the only gay character you saw on TV was, was Liberace, and he didn't even admit that he was gay. Um, I mean, you know, it no, was, so, so uh, that seems to me like what they, when they're, when they're saying America has been taken away from us, it seems to me that's what they're saying. We want that back. Uh, well, you referenced Nor Norman Lear, and of course, you know, the, the, this reminds us of All in the Family and, you know, the theme song of All in the Family, which was the song, Those Were the Days, where quite literally there is Archie Bunker sitting on a, a piano bench with his wife lamenting the fact that the, the great days as they knew them, days that were segregationist days, days in which um, white men were in charge of everything, have been stripped away from them. And so you're exactly right, Tom, that, that uh, you know, that culturally, demographically, racially, is how the needle is moved. Democracy is messy when, when it's inclusive. Uh, and, uh, and their belief is that, that messiness is in fact, you know, a mallet that has hammered them out of, hammered them away from the table. There is a, 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 a realm of scholarship about how rapidly cultures can assimilate people who are not part of the culture. Uh, you know, refugees coming into a country, uh, that kind of thing. And, you know, that argues that when you get, if, you're, if you've got assimilation running at, you know, one or 2%, nobody notices it. When it hits four or 5%, and I've seen different numbers from different studies, but, you know, this is fairly easy to find. When it hits four or 5%, suddenly you start getting a serious backlash within the society. Now, obviously, you know, we haven't had a huge influx of black people in the United States, but, but we have on television in the last 30 years, we, we haven't had a huge influx of gay people, but suddenly a lot of gay people are out and, and on television again, and not just television, I mean, you know, in the media in general. Is what we're seeing right now, th this cultural transition, 
Is it the velocity of it that is causing this right wing backlash? Or is it the fact that, um, you know, we're, we're reaching the point where half of all babies born in America are no longer white? Is it, is it that? I mean, you know, what is the what is the trigger for this? What's the thing yeah. that has suddenly caused them to go insane? Well, no, Tom, I think you put your finger on it when you say that, that you know, the cultural messengers um, have now expressed a level of representation, a level of tolerance for um, other communities uh, that didn't exist before. So well beyond the sheer numbers. I mean, after, you know, there, there were there are people in Iowa rebelling against the idea of this invasion of um, undocumented immigrants when, in fact, they were seeing only a tiny percentage of it. But what they really meant was everywhere they looked, meaning um, uh, voting ballots that were bilingual, meaning on television, uh, meaning on the Internet, they saw a different um, kind of America than the one that they were accustomed to. And I think that that's been a shock to their system and, and um, you know, the, uh, uh, the pervasiveness of social media and alternative uh, forms of information has um, in a lot of ways flooded the zone with um, both new cultural encounters, uh, both mm -hmm. wanted and unwanted, as well as disinformation. Yeah. And so my, um, my, it, my urge, um, forgive the interruption, Robert, we have just 20 sure. seconds, so we're gonna hit a hard break. Yeah. My urge is to tell them, okay, tough luck. This is America, you know, get over it. Is there another way to message right. that? Uh, well, yeah, saying tough luck, get over it is not an effective way for sure. But, um, uh, but I think that also simply coddling and accommodating you know, a very, very uh, culturally and racially resistant point of view is not the way to do it either. Yeah, which which is certainly how the Republican Party is doing it. Robert Draper is the author. The book is Weapons of Mass Delusion, When the Republican Party Lost Its Mind. Robert, brilliant work. Thank you so much for dropping by today. Great talking with you again. Great talking with you, Tom. Thank you. We'll be back. It's 18 minutes past the hour here on the Tom Hartman Program. Mike Pence is telling us you have no right to be free from religion. Really? We'll talk about that in a moment.